Welcome to another Friday night in the studio. I'm your host, Joe. How's everybody doing tonight? Everybody having fun? Everybody? Everybody? No? 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 I'm the only one here tonight. Getting the studio ready again. I, as you see, I'm in my corner here. Okay. And I know you can't see behind the camera here, but I'm in my ph photography studio that we record in for our show, the 222 Paranormal Podcast. Okay. And I got some sound barrier stuff up and that, but this wall here, you can see the window goes outside and then the uh, other room there, you got the door, the leaves on the deck and all that jazz, but I still, my corner here, you know, but anyhow, so I came across this article by Paul Seaborn and it piqued my interest because there's been a lot of talk lately about tonight's topic. All right. This article was dated March 13, 2018. And the title of it is Lower Michigan may be targeted targeted by falling space station. Now, Paul's from Australia, so you kind of give him a little bit of a little bit of slack, okay? He starts the article out by saying the Lower Peninsula of the state of Michigan is often referred to as the mitten. True, because of its shape resembles a winter hand covering. A winter hand covering. It's a mitten mitten now do you remember as your kids you'd get the mittens with the strings you go up and then when you reached over that you punch yourself in the head keep punching yourself yeah my mom gave me those i don't think she likes me very well but anyhow so anyways this article goes on to say the shape may be ironic if it's the latest predictions come true that the chinese dead falling tungungwang space station will pierce Earth's atmosphere on or about April 3rd. I think they should do it on April 1st. That way, when it crashes, these little Chinese guys get out and walk around and go, Oh, we joke at you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not right. I am not right, okay? That's the kind of mood I'm in tonight. But anyhow, this is kind of interesting. Uh, there's a company called the Aerospace Corporation, they operate a facility out of California that provides technical guidelines and advice to all aspects of space missions, including military, civil, and commercial. One of the critical aspects of their missions are the ends of the mission. So they actually, you can go up on Aerospace's website and they have a tracker right on their page showing you where this satellite is or I should say satellite space station, is and when it potentially could come down, where it's going to come down. The Tungung Wang, Tungung Wang, one space station. Now, listen to the spec, okay? And think of this thing falling back to Earth. It's 8.5 tons of space station that was launched in 2011, but in 2016 they lost contact, and they basically it's been floating without any controls since then. They have a high probability that it's going to crash, like a 140% probability it's going to crash real soon. And like I said, they think it's going to be around April 1st to April 3rd. And it'd be kind of fun if it was on April 1st, as long as it landed in the ocean, didn't hurt anybody. But they're speculating that Michigan is going to be a target for this thing. All right, so everybody that lives up there, you know, a lot of people live up there, and I know Dana. I know you live up there, and we, your sky viewing is unbelievable from your house. It's a possibility it may land in your backyard, and if it does, it's worth a lot of money. Um, hope it doesn't hit the house because I don't know if insurance covers Chinese space stations landing on your house. So anyhow, the other high probability. Now these guys, I really don't think they know exactly where this thing is going to come down at, because it says on the aerospace webpage other high possibility areas include northern china central italy northern spain the middle east new zealand uh, tasmania south africa southern africa or the northern united states so basically what they're saying is this thing could land anywhere in the world <laughs> they don't know um, but I, I really wanted to talk about space junk tonight, okay, and all the things that are up there, 
because there's a lot of crap up in the space and it's getting to the point where it's reaching critical mass. Okay. Where there's just too much stuff up there and things are colliding with each other and breaking apart and making smaller pieces and big or small, the pieces are really dangerous to any kind of space business or space craft or satellites that are up there. I do know that the International Space Station, one of the windows has a dent in it, because I think they're plexiglass or something, but one of the windows has a dent in it, and it was because it was hit by an object that was smaller than what you could see, okay? it's it, And these things are flying around there like 17,000 miles an hour, okay? Um, there's a actual syndrome called the Kessler syndrome, okay? And what that is is runaway debris collides with other runaway debris, breaks it in half, makes more. And like I said, they're really worried about this right now because it's reaching critical mass. Um, as of July 5th, 2016, the United States Strategic Command tracked a total of 17,852 artificial objects in low Earth orbit, okay, including 1,419 operational satellites. In 2013, okay, there were 117 million debris smaller than four inch square. Um, there's about 670,000 debris, which are one to 10, 10 centimeters. I don't know how big a centimeter is. And there's 29,000 large or large debris items floating around. Now you think about it. That's that's a ton. I mean, you're talking rocket parts. You're talking solid rocket boosters. You're talking, there's a 10-foot-long cable floating around up there, okay? Or 10, 10 mile long, sorry. And if you go up on YouTube, there's actual video of this thing. It's 10 miles long. And, of course, they say that there's spaceships all around it. But a lot of that stuff in those videos, and I know there's some stuff that makes, like, right-angle turns in that, which I have no idea what that is. But a lot of times when you see these videos of the, you know, things in space, you see these shimmering things go by. Those are, that's the crap up there, okay? And I know a lot of people say, oh, that's a, that's a UFO. But no, there's, there's a lot of stuff up there. And you're talking sizes from minute to solid rocket boosters still floating around up there. And sure, they can track the big stuff, but the little stuff they can't track. And it's the little stuff that pierce the hulls of the ships. Or the satellites break. I mean, think about having a communication satellite up there and one of these things breaking off an antenna. You know, it's a, it's a big deal. One of the other things is kind of cool. Uh, SpaceX launched the heavy lift rocket with the Tesla on board. And, you know, technically people are saying, oh, my God, that's more space junk they're putting up there, which, yeah, it is. Um, but it's kind of cool. And you can actually go online and see live video on YouTube from this. He's got a camera mounted on the side of it. And you can actually see this thing tumbling. You see Earth, and you see sky. And you see Earth, you see sky. And I guess it's going out to Mars. And that's another thing. Around Mars, Venus, there's Mars especially. There's so much crap around Mars also. Just debris that is just floating around. And you can actually go online. I say this a lot, but... You can go online, and there's actually pictures and maps of de debris fields. And it just, it's almost to the point where you can't even see the Earth anymore. So in uh, 2016, they started an initiative to clean up space, to get rid of all this junk. And, of course, there was a snag. It, it all, the big snag goes around the mining rights, okay? Now, I know we're not mining, but there's mining rights in space. Right now, it's a free-for-all. Okay, so there are companies getting on board to collect this metal that's up there. That's really precious metals. And the problem is you're getting these countries that are saying, well, wait a minute, even though that satellite's dead, we still own it. It's still floating up there. It's ours, so you can't collect it. You know, So they're trying to figure out how to get rid of all this space junk. That's up there. Now, 
there's a few different ways that they're doing it, okay? There's what they call the sales, okay? And they're not sales per se to move the ship. What it is is there's satellite goes up, and it deploys these big square sails on the sides. And each sail is like a sticky thing, okay? Sort of like when... Do you remember those old rollers that you saw the commercials for on TV? It picks up dog hair and all that stuff. It's kind of the same thing. The sails have this sticky material on them, okay? And the ship is actually flying at almost the same speed as debris. So as it's going, it's collecting all this debris. Now, the problem with this idea is what they said they're going to do with it after they collect all the debris is they're talking about just letting it fall into the atmosphere and burn up. Well, that's kind of what we're trying to avoid here because you don't want these big objects coming in. You know, we see a lot of little objects. Now, if you're sitting out at night and you look up at the sky and once in a while you see like a wisp, and I was really perplexed by these things, okay? So I was looking and looking and trying to figure out what these were. And I know they're not shooting stars, but they're just like these light wisp. They're just, just barely. And come to find out, it's just these little pieces of metal that's coming in the atmosphere and just burning up right away. And it burns up so bright that you can see it. I mean, these things are small. You know, you think about like a meteor shower. The meteors that you're seeing light up across the sky are tiny. Like you take one of the headphone jacks. It's the end of the headphone jack, just the, the curved part. That's probably how big these things are, but they light up so bright you can see them. Another idea is they're talking about deploying some hooks and to grab onto this material. This idea I was thinking about, too, is, wait, wait a minute, if you shoot something at it, when you hit it, it's going to bounce off. So I don't know about that. There's another theory that they can do, and it's uh, based on a magnetic theory, okay? And they actually want to take these cables and strew these cables out, electrify them, which causes an electronic uh, magnetic field, which will pull these metals to it, okay? Now, being in space, it's a little different, okay? On Earth here, a lot of this junk up there is aluminum, magnesium, you know, actually precious metals, that aren't that magnetic, okay? But being in space, it's a little different. When you create a magnetic field out there, it's almost like fake gravity, and they'll come to it. All these ideas are okay. I mean, I, I don't understand why they don't just put up a giant funnel and just fly it through all this debris so all the debris funnels into the, the holding cell, put it in the space shuttle. You know, if we launch space shuttles anymore, but put them in some kind of space shuttle and bring it down to Earth and reuse that metal. You know, that, that to me, that'd be the easiest way, but maybe it's not. I don't know. But I do know that someone else was talking about using the moon as the drop-off point. But then again, you'd have to go up there and you'd have to build all these, you know, factories on the moon. Um, you'd have to make sure the aliens don't mess with us that are on the other side of the moon. And it's just all this stuff is going to take time, but we're reaching critical mass. There's so much garbage up there. Um, one of the other ideas was to somehow get them all together and just let them come in the atmosphere and burn up. But you think about, okay, all this burning stuff, what's it going to do to our atmosphere? Who knows? You know, but it's just a big problem they're having right now, and they really have to think of the solution. With the sales idea is... Right now, it looks like that's the one they're going to do, which, like I said, I don't like because you actually have to take the stuff and then fly the, it back into the atmosphere, and hopefully it burns up. Well, that's what we're trying to avoid with this 8.5-ton Chinese space station that's going to come down here in a couple of days. You know, it'll be the same thing. But they're saying that in 2023 is when they're going to work on cleaning up. So do we have that much time, you know? Is this material going to start breaking apart? And what was it called again? The Kessler syndrome. How do we know this is going to happen? Once stuff starts breaking apart up there, it makes smaller stuff, makes more, makes more. So who knows? I mean, we don't know what's going to happen. But anyhow, 
let me know your thoughts. You know, I mean, you're, you're watching a video. Look down below. Look right down there. See it? Click that su subscribe button. And also over here, see the comments? Leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. Or get a hold of me on our Facebook page, 222 Paranormal Podcast on Facebook. And let me know what you think. Okay? Uh, a couple of announcements before I close this out. This is my last one on Facebook. Okay, I know, I know you're watching this probably on YouTube now, but I do it live on Facebook every Friday night at midnight. But it's going to change. I got another job. It's in the same company but at different hours. So I'll actually be able to come home at a decent hour. I won't have to do these at midnight. So I haven't figured out what night I'm going to do them on yet. But I'm always still going to post it on YouTube like you're probably watching it now. And hopefully if you are you're watching this on YouTube, click that subscribe button below. Okay. You can click the bell icon and it will give you notifications when I put up another video. It's kind of annoying. Okay. I've done it or done it. I've done it on other videos and I just get so many. It's like every day I look at the phone and it's, oh, there's something on and it's YouTube. But I guess it's kind of helpful because it does tell you when we put up new videos, but Hopefully I'll be doing it every week. I don't know what night I'm going to be live. Okay, probably Tuesday night, I'm thinking. You know, live, but you can always catch it on YouTube. Or at our Facebook page, 222 Paranormal Podcast. Other than that, I want to thank you for watching. Um, like I said, if you have any comments, let me know. Tell me what you think of all the, the space junk up there. Tell me what you think of the Roadster floating around up there, the Tesla Roadster. That was kind of cool. I was up on their website watching the live stream from them, and all these people are commenting, this is so fake. It's fake. They're faking it. This is in a studio in Hollywood. This kind of stuff. I'm like, oh, come on. Who cares? It's entertainment, okay? If he wants to spend his money shooting a car up in space for our entertainment, let him, you know? And it's funny, too, and they're all like, I hate watching this. This is so dumb. I'm like, you're watching it. You're, you know, but anyhow. So anyhow, folks, thanks for tuning in this week. And if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you for watching on YouTube. And I'm going to leave you with some second season by Dead in Five. Thanks, everybody. And I will see you next time. My favorite song by Dead and Five. Just saying. Good rock. You should hear it live. But, anyhow, goodbye.